Chick-fil-A is a fast food restaurant chain that started in 1946. Thank you for your suggestions. Aaron Cow. Cow. Yes, sweetie, cow. Cow. Paul, where are the burgers? For breakfast, try Chick Fil A's tasty chicken biscuits, chicken minis, or breakfast burritos. Two brothers, Truett and Ben Cathy, fresh from serving in World War II, came home to start their future. Ben had seen combat in the European theater, and his brother Truett had relatively easy duty as a clerk, and never went further from home than Fort Lewis, Washington. Truett was discharged in 1944, and when Ben came home, the two brothers began to plan their future. They decided they would start a restaurant, and after spending some time as employees of a woman who promised to set them up in a business but never did, they opened the Dwarf Grill. The Cathy brothers had begun the enterprise with four thousand dollars they were able to raise, partly by selling Truett's car, combined with six thousand six hundred dollars on loan from a bank, and for their money they had a restaurant only fifty feet wide and one hundred and fifty feet deep, including the kitchen. They had ten stools and four tables. On May 23, 1946, 25-year-old Truett Cathy and his younger brother Ben opened a restaurant called the Dwarf Grill at 461 South Central Avenue in Hapeville, Georgia. They started small with the Dwarf Grill, later renamed the Dwarf House, so named because of its small size and the seven dwarfs decor. Besides problems of supply, the Cathys had to deal with bureaucracy and other foibles, and they ended their first day with sales of fifty-eight dollars and twenty cents, a modest beginning, but a beginning still. Most of their patronage came from employees of the nearby Ford plant, as well as from the emerging Atlanta airport next to Hapesville, and many of these seemed to be repeat customers. For several years, the brothers worked alternating 12-hour shifts to staff the 24-hour restaurant. That is, until tragedy took Ben Cathy and a second brother and left Truett Cathy as a solopreneur. One Saturday in 1949, Ben Cathy left the restaurant and met up with his brother Horace. Both brothers were licensed pilots, so it wasn't a big deal for them to fly a small plane to Chattanooga, Tennessee. Sadly, they never made it to their destination. Their plane crashed near Dalton, Georgia, and in the space of a day, Truett Cathy lost two brothers. He soon purchased Ben's share of the business, and his wife Jeanette joined him there, doing everything from waiting tables to running the cash register. When the Cathy children were old enough to work, they joined their parents at the restaurant. Another key element of the Chick-fil-A corporate identity was forged in those early days. The policy of operating six days a week, but never on Sunday. The Dwarf House, in fact, was open 24 hours a day, but closed from midnight on Saturday night to midnight on Sunday night. And in more than five decades, the policy hasn't changed. Two years later, in 1951, they opened a second Dwarf House restaurant in Forest Park, Georgia. Kathy developed what would become the original Chick-fil-A fried chicken sandwich. For the next nine years, Kathy prospered as he and his wife Jeanette raised their family. And then, in 1960, another tragedy came when fire destroyed the Forest Park restaurant. Kathy had become aware of the idea of fast food restaurants, which he judged to be the coming wave in food service. So, with ninety thousand dollars in borrowed capital, he opened a new restaurant in Forest Park, based on the concept of those Lil Abner restaurants in Chicago. It seemed like the right idea, but soon he discovered that customers preferred the Dwarf House to his new idea. Okay, hold on, hold on. I like a good story as much as the next person, but what in hell does this have to do with where Scott Lang is? I'm getting there. I'm getting there. You put a dime in him, you gotta let the whole song play out. He's like human jukebox. Yeah, we're four minutes and fifty-five seconds in, and so far we haven't heard anything about Chick-fil-A. 
Well, be patient, and it'll be coming next. In the kitchen, Kathy began experimenting with different ways to cook and serve poultry quickly and economically. He started with a breast fillet and began serving it fried on a bun, which eliminated the problem for customers. This was the prototypical Chick-fil-A sandwich, and Kathy began to perfect it with different cooking methods. Eventually, he settled on a pressure cooker with peanut oil and different spices and seasonings, including the addition of a pickle to the sandwich, which would become a lasting part of the Chick-fil-A formula. But they were not yet called Chick-fil-A sandwiches. They were just chicken sandwiches, which rapidly began to outsell hamburgers on the Dwarf House menu. In 1963, Kathy decided to give them a name in order to market the product. A patent attorney had advised him that he could use ordinary words for his product name as long as he misspelled or in some way altered the terms from their dictionary usage. Working with the words chicken and filet, Kathy came up with chick filet, making the use of A convey the concept of being the first or best. He hired the Richard Hyman Company to create the logo that chick filet still uses. And in 1964, he incorporated the company. At first, Chick-fil-A sold its product to other restaurants during the mid-1960s, but Kathy was weary that a large chain would take his idea, change it slightly, and make it their own. Decided to move from selling licensed products to operating Chick-fil-A restaurants. In 1967, the first of these opened in the Greenbrier Mall, south of Atlanta. <laughs> Finally! And here we go. As malls grew, so did Chick-fil-A. By 1971, it had seven restaurants in Georgia and the Carolinas, and within three years, it would triple that number. But before the explosive growth of 1971 to 1974, several key aspects of Chick-fil-A's corporate philosophy would develop. Kathy articulated four basic tenets. One, the company would grow not by selling franchises, but by forming joint ventures with independent operators. Two, they would operate exclusively out of the shopping malls. Number three, financing would come not through debt, but primarily from the company's own profits. And people, number four, would be the primary focus of Chick-fil-A. With the exception of number two, which had to be adjusted as shopping malls became saturated with restaurants in the 1980s, a hallmark of Kathy's foresight, these tenants have remained in effect ever since. Chick-fil-A's operator agreement and its emphasis on people are both highly unusual. As the company plans a new location, instead of looking for franchisees, Chick-fil-A conducts a search for a highly responsible person often from within the organization, to become an operator. That person invests only $5,000, a token sum compared to a typical investment of a franchisee, which can easily be a quarter of a million dollars, to sublease the restaurant. After six weeks of paid training, the operator is in business with a guaranteed salary of $30,000 a year, plus half of the net profits after 15% of gross sales goes to Chick-fil-A Inc., an operator can earn a six-figure income and operators are highly motivated to make their restaurants profitable. With its strong personnel and its distinctive product, Chick-fil-A grew rapidly in the 1970s alongside the shopping malls in which its restaurants were located. In 1982, as Kathy recalled in his new come in speech, the company fell victim to its own success. Other restaurant chains, impressed by Chick-fil-A, began marketing their own Chick-fil-A sandwiches. To counter their competition, Chick-fil-A put coupons in newspapers throughout the country, and the response rate turned out to be twice as much as they expected, thus leading to heavy losses. Previously reliant mostly on word of mouth, Chick-fil-A in 1982 began to focus on advertising, first with an abortive coupon campaign and then with a successful slogan aimed at reminding the public who created the first chicken filet sandwich, first and best. In 1983, the iconic Chick-fil-A sauce was invented at the Spotsylvania Town Center Chick-fil-A location in Fredericksburg, Virginia. Three years later, in 1985, Chick-fil-A introduced its Dwarf House line named after the original restaurant, which offered customers a choice of sit-down, family dining, or carry-out. 
In 1986, Chick-fil-A first ventured outside of the malls, and as the number of freestanding restaurants grew, in 1993, Chick-fil-A opened its 500th restaurant, and in 1996, it celebrated its 50th anniversary of the original Dwarf House. It introduced Truett's Grill as a 50s-style diner. The Eat More Chicken advertising campaign launched in 1997 which became enormously successful. Chick-fil-A entered the new millennium on solid ground. Indeed, company sales surpassed $1 billion in 2000. In 2001, the 1,000th Chick-fil-A location opened its doors in Georgia. At this time, expansion remained a large part of the company's strategy. Eyeing the western United States as a lucrative growth region, Chick-fil-A opened restaurants in Utah and Arizona in 2003 and also set plans in motion to open four freestanding restaurants in Southern California. In 2004, eight additional restaurants opened in California and two were established in Arizona. In 2004, the company began offering a new breakfast menu that included the Chick-fil-A Chicken Minis chicken or sausage breakfast burritos, and a chicken, egg, and cheese bagel. In 2006, four flavors of the hand-spun milkshakes were added to the menu and became one of the most popular new menu additions in company history. In 2006, the company opened 73 new locations. Chick-fil-A planned to open additional 90 restaurants in 2007, with much of the growth stemming from operations in California and Arizona. In 2008, Chick-fil-A was among the first fast food restaurants to become completely free of trans fats. In 2012, the company found itself embroiled in controversies over comments and religious viewpoints made by the Cathy families about same-sex marriage. It would lead to boycotts and sharp criticism towards the company. On September 8, 2014, founder Truett Cathy passed away. In October of 2015, the company opened its largest restaurant, a three-story, 5,000-square-foot restaurant in Manhattan. On December 17, 2017, Chick-fil-A broke their tradition and opened on a Sunday to prepare meals for passengers left stranded during a power outage at the Atlanta Hartsfield Jackson International Airport. On February 13, 2023, they began offering their first non-meat sandwich, a breaded cauliflower sandwich. In May of 2023, Chick-fil-A closed its first standalone restaurant in the Greenbrier Mall without stating a reason. In March of 2024, Chick-fil-A announced it would depart from the company's previous commitment of using only antibiotic-free chicken. Today, there are 3,059 Chick-fil-A restaurants in the United States as of January of 2024 in 48 states, Washington, D.C., Puerto Rico, and Canada. Thank you for watching. If you like this content, and if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Thanks.